Since the time of Plato, ideas have been important. This is the story of three men, Plato, Pope Francis, and President Barack Obama. All of these men, at one time or another, have had ideas. What they didn't realize is that when they started to rub these ideas up against reality, unpredictable consequences followed. When Barack Obama was elected President of the United States, he was told that he had become the most powerful man in the world. He thought this was a good opportunity to put some ideas into practice. But what Plato knew, and Obama is still realizing, is that ideas and reality belong to two different worlds. Another man who had ideas, or rather one big idea, was Osama bin Laden, the hedgehog to Obama's fox. One of Obama's big ideas was to make America a force for good in the world, to take advice, pull back from foreign adventures, and create goodwill. But he was under an illusion. In the 1940s, Franklin D. Roosevelt made a pact with Wahhabism, which would poison American foreign relations for the rest of time. To understand Obama's failure, we must go back more than 200 years to decisions made by George Washington, which would make it impossible for anyone, anywhere, ever to implement an idea. The global system of capital and interconnectedness made even the most powerful man in the world completely powerless, which is something that Plato knew. It is big business, profitable business, for the mercenary persons who produce it. Plato wrote a book called The Republic, in which he sets out his model of ideal government. President Barack Obama was challenged at every point by the Republicans. It is an irony that the man who first created ideas also set up the conditions under which ideas were doomed to fail. This story would not be complete without Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the self-proclaimed caliph of the Islamic State. He believes that he is implementing a form of ideal government. Baghdadi, though, has bent messy reality to his ideas by force of arms, something Obama has failed to do and which Plato avoided, knowing that all was doomed to failure due to social media and the power of faceless corporations. Meanwhile, across the ocean, the United States of America came into being after a hard-fought struggle for independence from imperialism, dictatorship, and taxation without representation. What they didn't realize is how quickly their efforts would be hijacked by the unpredictable flow of international capital. In 1790, a diminutive Scotsman named Alexander Hamilton delivered a report on public credit to George Washington. In it, he suggested that the only way to preserve the liberty of the new nation was for the federal government to assume the debt of all the individual states. In the years that followed, Hamilton was instrumental in founding the first bank of the United States. Fifteen years later, Hamilton was shot through the liver and died. But it was too late. 